as, as, my, as my colleague said, there we need predictions, we need to, we need to see what is future. So I, I guess the, probably the best way is to ask someone from Gartner, and we have a, a special guest here, so Lukash Erben from Gartner and Insight IT will be speaking about the future. So the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you for having me today. Uh, well, we have been prepared by, by many sci-fi authors uh, in past for this, from Karl Chapek and his R, uh, uh, RUR, uh, through um, Arthur C. Clarke and his 2001. We've been prepared that uh, AI will eventually come and uh, will help us, but maybe also will threaten us. And threatening us is something we, uh, we maybe start thinking first when we learn that it's very capable. And that's what we started with uh, in, in last year, my colleagues at Gartner started with. And they, they thought, okay, so we are doing those predictions. Can uh, AI already match us? And can, can it eventually replace us? And they played already with the old model, with GPT-2, and tried to ask uh, AI to do some predictions on AI, of course. And uh, uh, what happened uh, was that uh, they uh, made a set of three predictions by AI and three predictions by, uh, by uh, analysts and uh, spot the difference, spot the, spot the false ones. Well, you may spot the false ones on the top right, the Automated automation is something that wouldn't go through the, uh, through the final proofreading, probably, at Gartner. But uh, at, the bottom, uh, at the bottom right corner, there is something that might sound feasible and probable. So if you look at it, the, the red ones, those are the fake ones. The, the white ones are the actual ones. And it will be interesting whether some of the fake ones will be actually uh, fulfilled and, and more precise than the, than the real ones. So. What we'll talk about today, we'll talk about the, uh, about the uh, hype, about the elephant in the room, which is, of course, ChatGPT and, and, uh, and um, uh, generative AI, uh, <clears throat> and about the, the, the reality of generative AI versus the hype. Uh, I'll talk a, a bit about uh, the workers and AI at work, um, because Gartner looks at what our companies actually doing with the AI. How are they implementing it? How are they planning to use it? Or what have they already done? Then I look. Uh, then we look at at, at uh, how easy it will be actually, and it already is, is to buy or make AI. What will it be good in a couple of years, and uh, where we stand now? What the companies are really doing, and what have they done in 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 implementing and using, and what are the challenges that are that they are facing? So let's look at the elephant first. Um, Gartner did the predictions uh, prediction last year, saying more than thirty percent of the new drugs and materials will be. Uh, systematically dis uh, discovered using generative AI techniques. Now, think about it, this says about the drugs and materials. It doesn't say about uh, a thesis for a bachelor's work or a post for uh, social networks. So this is what uh, we have been talking about a lot before the hype around the, the generative AI, be it uh, the mind journey or the chat GPT came. Uh, and why, why that <laughs> hype came and why it's so strong, of course, because uh, people have spotted it and, and found out it's really good and it's really useful and start use it, started using it so fast that it broke all the records. It took 24 months, Twitter, to get first million users. It took, it took Spotify five months and it took G G G GPT five days to get first million users. So the hype is understandable. Uh, and Carter has something that talks a lot about hype. It's called Hype Cycle. And it's based on uh, Roy Amara's uh, law. Roy Amara was a futurist. And he said uh, in, his, in his law or in his, uh, in, in, in his um, observation that we tend to overestimate the impact of the new technologies and technological advancements in the short term, and we tend to underestimate it in, uh, in the long term. And that's what hype, hype cycle is about. It shows you where are the various technologies, in this case, the various uh, uh, technologies uh, uh, related to AI uh, from perspective of hype and maturity. And as you can see, this is from last year, from, from summer uh, of 2022. Generative AI was just entering the peak of the hype. And analysts expected back then that it will take two to five years to come to that mature, mature phase. Now, we are maybe accelerating at a faster pace than that now. Uh, and just to explain you how the, uh, how the hype cycle combines the, uh, the hype and maturity, the first, ha the first half of the cycle is the hype, is that we overestimate. The second half is the maturity. And uh, there are a lot of ways you can look at, at, at hype. You can look at uh, what are the opportunities from supplier perspective or vendor perspective, what are the opportunities from user perspective, where you st st maybe start uh, hiring people for that. 
you can look at it in a very simple way, the, 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 the image on the right here. Uh, what we could be using, maybe, but it's risky, and on, on the left, left half of the cycle, and on the right, right half, why aren't we using this, and is it, is it deliberate decisions that we skip that and haven't invested in that? So, think about AI as about, uh, uh, about and especially generative AI, as about a hype, uh, hype issue. Now, let's try to look through that hype. Uh, Gartner has uh, many uh, useful visuals. One of them is the use case prism, which tells you how uh, various technologies are actually in reality being used, implemented, or, or developed in, in uh, various uh, uh, areas or industries. So, so for generative AI, of course, at the top of the, of the use case uh, prism, where you have greatest business value and uh, highest feasibility, you have that, these things that the chat GPT or Midjourney do. But there are many other things that might have a huge impact and might be really revolutionary for society, like the drug design and the material design, but are not so easy to do, and therefore there isn't so much hype about them. Uh, you can look at it also as a uh, you can look at it also as, as a matrix across uh, various industries and what uh, what may be used where. Uh, you can see that, for example, synthetic data uh, is the area of generative AI that might be used across most industries. Now, if, you, if we look at what, what was happening uh, in the venture capital world before the AI hype came, before the chat GPT hype came last year, there have been a lot of investments in many various areas. And uh, between 2019 and third quarter of 2022, last year, uh, total in venture capital investments in, in generative AI were about $1.7 billion. Now, then came a chat GPT, and uh, after a few weeks, months, Microsoft uh, uh, basically decided to pour into uh, OpenAI $10 billion. So more than five times the total amount of investments over previous more than two years. So that really, this really also changed a, a lot of things and accelerated the developments uh, quite a bit. So how these accelerated developments will, uh, will pro, uh, project into areas uh, that are most relevant to most of us, that's work and to how should we look at AI as a worker. And Gartner prediction, again from the last year, says that by 2025, uh, almost a third of outbound uh, marketing messages by, uh, done by large organizations will be generated by AI. Now this might come probably even sooner than that, uh, looking at what's happening with, with generative AI. Uh, and uh, uh, we will be seeing a lot of troubles uh, coming from this, from using AI, because uh, one of the biggest issues, of course, we are finding with, uh, with, uh, uh, with the large models is that they create something that, that looks very convincing, but that might be uh, full of errors. And error is something we have big problem to allowing AI to do. Uh, let me give you an example with autonomous cars. Uh, how many uh, accidents are there? How many deaths are there on the roads every year caused by drivers? And these are acceptable for us. But will we, will we be able to accept just 1% of those uh, accidents and deaths if they are caused by uh, autonomous vehicles and by AI? And this projects to many other areas, even to those marketing messages, of course. So one of the biggest problems will be uh, when we start really using AI uh, officially in, 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 in businesses, uh, will we be able to tolerate its, its mistakes or not? Uh, will we have trust? Uh, will we... Uh, will we uh, be able to have it transparent enough to know why those mistakes have happened, for example. So this is one of the biggest challenges that will come. And uh, of course, uh, the future of working with AI might be bad and might be good. A bad future is having the worst uh, assistant or even boss that you can imagine that gives you assistant that gives you thousands of alerts uh, that, uh, that demands updates at, at hourly basis and, uh, and really uh, makes you into into crazy mouse on, in, on, in the workplace. On the other hand, it might be the ideal uh, ideal work pal that uh, that uh, makes your work easy, fun, much more, makes you more, much more productive. Uh, that uh, really replaces maybe your your superior when he goes on a paid leave, in a way that he reminds you of your tasks kindly and helps you to keep on track. In fact, this will be something in, in between. There will be some good aspects and some bad aspects but don't expect the AI to only improve our lives and work. And I think there will be more warnings coming from other speakers today uh, after my session.
uh, how are workers actually looking at AI? This is from a survey that was conducted already in 2021 uh, among uh, 1,500 respondents by Gartner. And it shows that about a quarter of people are not very uh, happy about uh, uh, vision or onset of AI. They are averse, they are not really um, uh, welcoming these changes and new technologies. Maybe they are even those who still read ordinary books, like me. <laughs> uh, uh, but about a quarter or more than a quarter of people are friendly, are very positively looking forward to having a chance to, to, to uh, increase productivity, have some work uh, really uh, accelerated and eased. And about half of them were conditional. Depends on what it will, be, what it will bring me. Will it threaten me in, in the work or will it help me? Of course, this might change, and this, this has probably changed after many people had those first experiences with, uh, with uh, ChatGPT and other, uh, other AI tools that are publicly available today. Some may have uh, gotten happier and more excited, and some may have gotten more threatened. Uh, maybe that, uh, that scare was the first reaction in most cases. I am done, I will be replaced within a couple of years, and uh, what will I do? But let's look at, uh, let's look at, at, it, at it also positively. The AI will infuse every aspect of, of work of, uh, of us, technologists and uh, executives and knowledge workers, uh, and uh, it will change a lot. And it's up to, it's up on us and up on our, our leaders in, in businesses where it will be more positive or more negative change. One of the reasons why this change is happening and will be happening is because it will be much easier to buy or make AI in the future. Uh, Gartner expects, and again, this is last year's prediction, that by 2025, half of the companies that are implementing, that will be implementing some AI orchestration platforms, meaning they will use and combine various types of AI, uh, big proprietary offerings, and also, for example, open source, to create even better solutions. And uh, there are other areas that will be helping that. Uh, Lower data barriers, for example. The, the having data for training has been a huge issue in the past, but uh, may not be anymore in the future because uh, synthetic data generated by the generative AI will be helping. Companies may be looking at different ways of, uh, of training using data that are relevant to their use case, and it might be different type of data, not just the big one. And there will be other, other approaches like sharing marketplaces, broker use. Of course, uh, I already mentioned the proprietary solutions and uh, open source uh, foundation models, and there is already quite a wide, uh, quite a wide uh, offering uh, in the market. This is just a, a current overview of the more significant ones. So uh, a lot of things can be done with this, and I'm hearing from the market that actually companies are experimenting, especially with those open source foundation models, trying to develop their own solutions and and, and buying the powerful GPUs or, or systems that, that, that they can use to train and, and experiment. Uh, surprisingly, another area where organizations feel that this might not be so difficult is talent. Uh, and that might uh, sound uh, very strange because in IT, talent is always a problem. But with AI, it might be somewhat different. Uh, the thing is that uh, the, uh, the AI makes actually itself more accessible. It can help people train themselves to, to, uh, to compose functions. It can, it can help people to easily handle low-code or no-code approaches. So uh, there is something that you can call citizen AI, and actually the usage of the AI and, and um, uh, implementation of AI from the user perspective in the companies might be easier uh, than, we, than many uh, uh, might expect. And of course, this will have uh, maybe some strange implications. Well, today, uh, many companies have developed many, a number of chatbots, for example. And maybe in the future, when people get uh, really good at these things with, with the help of AI, they will develop their own chatbots to represent themselves. And you might get to a strange situation where chatbots will be calling chatbots. Those of you who are from, uh, from uh, Czech Republic might uh, know the song by uh, uh, the country group, uh, um, called Dialogue to the, the Dialogue 2000, Dialogue 2000s, where two phone answering machines are calling each other and talking to each other. This is about 30 or 40 years old, maybe 50. And it's very much what's uh, been already experimented, very much like what's been already experimented uh, in, in recent time. For example, there were tests with uh, Googleplex calling uh, restaurants.
for bookings, for table availability. And uh, in some cases, it called and talked to another chatbot. And they actually, the other chatbot tried to upsell him on a table. They were discussing. And you can even have different personalities of those chatbots. One can be, for example, rude American. The other may be polite English. And it makes really uh, interesting situations. And these situations will, will roll out in the future in many, in many forms and uh, uh, influence uh, really how we live and how we do business. However, when you have less data, when you have fewer experts, uh, citizen AI developers, uh, this will be cheap, easy, and this will be risky. And that's the important thing to, to, to think about. So what will be good to AI in some three to five years? And what might be bad about it? Well, um, last year Gartner did predictions that by 2026, 5% uh, of workers will, will routinely use AI against the wishes of their uh, employer. I think this is already happening today. Uh, maybe sometimes unknowingly, because many companies still haven't put uh, some rules for using, for example, ChatGPT with uh, company data or company content. But uh, it's already happening today and will be happening in the future. Uh, uh, this, is, this is because uh, uh, we'll be accelerating uh, the ways we use AI. And of course, one of the ways uh, to do it is to basically just accelerate all the things you already do. Just automate automate with AI the approaches that we have been already automating in past with other with other with uh, uh, other technologies and you can also innovate uh, in automation area and uh, uh, there might be some really interesting use cases for example imagine a company uh, running an AI that monitors all the conversations of the employees for due diligence to actually evaluate how innovative the uh, the company is how many good good new ideas regarding the business are being developed in, in the company and really projecting that into some reports and so on of course uh, some of these things might go wrong uh, AI may be uh, uh, interacting doing chain reactions and uh, one such example might be you might run for example a, a e-commerce site where you uh, where you pro provide also space for other uh, other uh, e-tailers, and you do you run two types of AI. One is monitoring what is being sold, what are the popular items, and and basically recommends you what to start selling on, on, on your site. And the other is, for example, bidding in in the in the supply chain. And imagine uh, one of your partners that sells starts selling something. The AI notices it, informs the other AI that the AI in the supply chain overbids that particular partner, and you end up in the court because you have. Uh, problems with uh, uh, with uh, monopoly power, and uh, well, we mentioned people uh, using AI against will of their employees. And one of the big topics will be bring your own AI. Will we allow it? I mean, we have allowed it with phones, we have allowed it with uh, with uh, laptops, we have allowed it, allowed it with cloud applications. We'll probably have to allow it to some, to some extent with uh, AI. But you mean? You know, uh, when, a, uh, when you have one AI, you can control to some extent or know what it does, but when you combine more of them, you no longer have that, uh, 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 that uh, ability to know what will happen out of that. Uh, so, scaled AI that really will automate every aspect, but will also com uh, complicate things a bit. For instance, now, what are the companies doing now? Gartner expects that by, 70, by 2025, 70% of new internally developed applications will have some AI or ML-based model incorporated. That's a lot, and it will uh, really change a lot of things, but there will be many challenges. When we ask in 2019 CIOs whether, uh, when they will uh, employ AI, uh, one-fifth uh, said that they have already done that, and uh, including that one-fifth, uh, four-fifths said they will do it by 2022. When Gartner asked uh, those CIOs again in 2022, only one third say they actually employed AI. So there are still a lot of, a lot of uh, challenges. Data is one thing, and I have talked about it and why it might not be that much of a challenge anymore. Uh, another challenge that, we might be, uh, that might be harder to overcome is measuring uh, uh, AI value. It's like measuring the cybersecurity value. I mean, you either have it, you don't have it. If you don't have it, you don't know how valuable it would be until you are hacked. So with AI, it's in some, in some ways similar. And of course, lack of stuff. I, I was talking about how companies don't see it as a problem. They don't see it as a problem in the worker area, but 
if you want to build really something advanced, you need those top experts, and those are hard to come by. And another problem. Out of those 30% of companies that have already implemented AI, 40% indicate they have thousands of, or hundreds of thousands of models deployed. That's crazy. That's really AI models pro. Can you do any, uh, any, any you know, control on that? Uh, uh, this, will be a, this will be a challenge. AI is flooding those organizations who are using it. And the hardest thing in the future might be governance. And uh, success will depend on it. And uh, our future will depend on it. But I think that's for the next speaker more to talk about, about governance and, and safety of AI. This is all for me for now. Uh, of course, time for questions. And I can recommend some Gartner webinars on AI that uh, have been recently broadcast and are on demand or will be in the future. Well, thank you, our first speaker for a wonderful presentation. And uh, we have several questions posted by our viewers. I may start with the first question. I will try to answer to my best knowledge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm more of a follower than AI expert. Yeah, maybe I will start with a relatively hard. <laughs> okay. No, I, I mean, there, there is a, if you think that the initial hype uh, has been created by a financial speculation. That, uh, um, it has been uh, not created, but it has been fueled. Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, the, the hype is real and it's, it's relevant because whoever tried the chat GPT was overwhelmed. Even though we find it makes mistakes, it hallucinates, it can go really weird at some, yeah. in some situations. Uh, the huge investments that have been done have have accelerated the release of the new models. We know that almost for sure, that there is a pressure from board members of Microsoft who are currently probably controlling OpenAI to great extent. And they are accelerating the release of new features, of, of the new versions and of the use cases. So it has accelerated it. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, maybe uh, let's get uh, a little bit more visionary because uh, there is a huge added value behind AI and using uh, of AI. So uh, what do you think, what will be the, uh, for example, in the next five or ten years, the most uh, valuable uh, use case uh, for using of AI and how it will impact the society? You are asking about five to ten years, and honestly, yes, exactly. uh, I, I, I saw some slides of the, of, the, of the next speaker, and I think they will tell, they will show you that it's really almost impossible to expect what will happen in five to ten years from now, because things that we were expecting to come after 2040 or 2050 might be coming before 2030 in the AI area, uh, and this this might change the game again. I mean, two or three years ago, uh, we were looking at generative AI. And uh, there were investors were convinced there is more opportunities in those materials or drugs areas because there is a lot of money to be saved by generative AI, mm -hmm. really. But then, uh, with the big language models and the, the, their abilities to to, to really change. work in the knowledge mm -hmm. economy or to help in the knowledge economy or maybe crash the knowledge economy depends how you look at it, uh, completely change the situation. Yes, uh, it's clear that uh, uh, there is huge development behind it at the end that uh, it will uh, evolve uh, during the time. But on the other hand, still, uh, there are many use cases. And uh, what is clear right now is that uh, it definitely will impact the society. What we don't know is what the regulation will do. Yeah. Uh, US has started talking about regulations. EU has started talking about regulations. Italy has banned ChatGPT. So... Uh, for, for reasons that are more related to, let's say, protection of, <laughs> yes. uh, of the personal uh, data. But uh, uh, the regulation might be also quite influential in what will happen and where the value of the AI will actually lie, mm -hmm. uh, because it may um, change uh, that situation in the market. Okay. I have another question. I mean, uh, the, I mean to, to be precise, the, the, the viewer is asking what is the possibility of a chatbot to simulate his or her behavior on the social network, but maybe we can even generalize the question in sense of how do you view this uh, future in social network when you know adopting AI and uh, all these like uh, special artificial intelligence people coming inside? Well, it depends on how social networks will re react to that. Yep. For example, I would see social networks like Twitter being more inclined to really make a, a perfect differentiated, uh, more differentiated 
between who is actual user that is verified and who is some unknown persona which might be actually human or which might not be human. So of course, again, you might have a verified human that will have a chatbot in the future post for himself. <laughs> so we are going into really funny and, and strange situations. And uh, I think the social networks will all change in many ways that might not be related to, mm -hmm. to AI. For example, one thing uh, analysts at Gartner are talking about is that in the future, uh, uh, the control of the data, of the personal data, will turn around. And actually, people will start selling or, or offering their personal data to the social network in exchange for the services provided. Mm -hmm. And so do you think that there could be the artificial person which has become famous, but it's not a person at all? Uh, certainly, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. that uh, it is already happening. Yeah, it's already uh, happening, I know. There are but some, then there there are are some many issues, legal issues, yeah. like uh, rights and... and uh, mm. Exactly. I, know, I mean that, uh, you know, these people can earn a lot of money on the social network, so then if you create an artificial person, then it depends on who is creating and... Of course, of course, the question is also what will be, what will be the reaction of the public? Will people yeah. differentiate it between virtual persons and real persons? Will it be perceived in the same way by an audience? That's another question we, we don't have answer to right now. But maybe the viewer is actually asking about the social hacking. So uh -huh. you're going to his, his or her yeah. account. And yeah, this is, this is a big issue already today because you can really emulate voice, you can emulate the style of writing. Yeah. And uh, as the AI, the generative AI will get more capable and affordable and available, you may uh, you may even emulate uh, easily. You can do it now, but it's not that easy. A video of someone. So maybe we are not here. Maybe, yeah, we are not here. maybe <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> artificial intelligence. Um, uh, I guess we are mostly out of time. Yeah. So I think you were great opening the conference, uh, and we will move to another topic. Uh, thank you. Thank you.